And we are here at Mobile World Congress Day 3 with Storm from Seavers. How are you? Very good, thanks. Well, this has been an extraordinary show, but what's your takeaway after three days at MWC? I would say, number one, it's a lot of people again. You know, it's back to, to how it was before the COVID scare, I would say. Uh, and then, of course, everything is happening now. I mean, SATCOM is, is really booming everywhere. We see AI everywhere. And, and of course, 5G sort of has been a little bit slow, but we can see more of that now, I think, again. And tell us, uh, tell the audience, rather, about the value proposition from Sievers and the range of different solutions and yeah. technologies that you guys offer. Yeah, so on Mobile World Congress, we are uh, sort of here for the, the wireless business unit, and, and that is focused on you know, 5G, 6G, and SATCOM. And we do RFICs, uh, antenna arrays, and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, that is used by system vendors mostly, everything from ground terminals to as you can see here on top of me, we have sort of a, a SATCOM uh, satellite uh, services as well. And then we have uh, you know, the system vendors who makes the fixed wireless access for 5G, that kind of stuff. Tell us about your tech stack. How far up the stack do you go? And what are some of the key applications that you're yeah. seeing driving the business? We're very far down in the stack. We, we're a semiconductor company, so we do you know, the RFICs coming from, you know, uh, zero IF baseband all the way up to the RF. And we do RF from uh, 20 gigahertz all the way up to 71 gigahertz today. And so very little software, very little stack, but we're working with partners on that side. As you can see in the, in the booth, we're working with NXP, we're working with other guys who does the level one stacks and other things for, for example, Oran, Oran and that kind of stuff. And what's been the driver for the business, which has been pretty good, I've been following your Results? Are yeah. there some use cases or niches or verticals that have been really good for you the last year or two? Yeah. So over the last two years, I mean, we've grown very heavily. Uh, two years ago, we grew about 46 percent. Wow. Last year, 80 percent growth wow. on, the, on the top line. And it's been very much in the wireless business. It's been about SATCOM a lot, a lot of development projects with with partners. In our uh, photonics business, it's been very much around you know, the optical I.O. things that's going to happen around AI and, and how you connect the GPUs for NVIDIA in the future. And then also some sensors around LiDAR and sensor for wow. consumer electronics. So all of that together have really uh, spurred the business in the right direction. That's exciting. And you, you've built quite an innovation engine, amazing teams. Describe the team and its distribution and the kind of R&D uh, folks that you have yeah. on board. So we are about 125 people today. Half and half is in, in each business unit. The, the wireless business unit is based in, in Sweden and in New Jersey in the US, mostly. And then we have our photonics business in Glasgow where we have our own fab. And the, and the businesses are actually a bit different. One is fabless where we do you know, a lot with global foundries on the, on the wireless side. And then we have our own Indian phosphide fab up in Glasgow where we do all the lasers. Very cool. Well, I'll have to take a tour one day. You should, you should. Um, so, of course, you work with OEMs, but tell us about maybe some of the end customers that you can, or you know, how they're yeah, using I mean, the chips. Yeah, I mean, for the U.S. audience, I think it's, it's soon to be, you know, when you go between uh, San Francisco and San Diego and in the new electric Caltrains, yeah, I love they it. will actually be connected with our stuff. Uh, there will be gigabit speeds into the trains, you know, with our 60 gigahertz 5G solutions together with Nomad, who, who uh, sort of installs that together with uh, our Port and Blue Wireless. So that's really exciting. We're going to see you know, that happening within the coming six months, I think. And your technology is really about performance at the edge and yep. beyond. Um, how are you differentiated for some of the other modules or off-the-shelf technologies yeah. out there? So we're trying to sort of, we have a very broad portfolio now, of course, but we're also trying to leverage all the development that we have within the company. So for example, we acquired a company called Mixcom out of, of uh, Columbia Tech uh, and, and Professor Harish, who's our MD there. Uh, and they had sort of developed some really cool beamformer technology with, uh, with global foundries with a very high efficiency. 
while the, the old Sievers wireless in the same type of things so were really high, highly integrated circuits. So we can combine all of those into products that can range all the way from the base station side all the way down to the CPs. So that's sort of where we uh, can uh, leverage that. And of course, the customers want to see a broad portfolio where they can use our solutions. So it looks like the future is all about very high speed, high performance, big data at the edge. Yes. Uh, so you're, you're ahead of the game. <laughs> yeah, I think we're in the game, and I mean, it's been a bit challenging on the 5G side of things, but I think after the C-band now is sort of uh, stabilized in the U.S. and the millimeter waves coming, we also see, you know, things in, in, in Asia now, particularly like in Taiwan, Japan, and, and South Korea, but also India is one of the bigger markets that goes what we call the FR2 band, which is the millimeter wave bands. Well, very exciting. Uh, it's a great booth. I'll take some pictures. What's next beyond... Uh, Mobile World Congress, you have a real job. I have a just... real job. No, I mean, of course, I, I work a lot, you know, and, and even here, we, we have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, in, investors and, and, and bankers who are here, but uh, the, the big next show is actually OFC yes. in, uh, in San Diego in a month, and that's, uh, I think, it's going to be even bigger in some sense because we expect, you know, to see what the big guys are doing, NVIDIA, AMD, you know, Microsoft, all of those guys, what's happening next in the in the optical interconnect within the within the data centers. And we have a very good position there, so we are extremely excited to, to be on that show as well soon. That's amazing. Well, from the fire to the frying pan, or vice exactly. versa. Exactly, yeah. Congratulations on all the success. Thank you, thank you. Uh, upwards and onwards, as they say. <laughs>